Alright, so um, I'm just going to go over the normal operation for the power cot and the power load and then I know, I know you guys are going to use it because you run calls, um, but mostly it's going to be troubleshooting. Um, so if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to stop me, but there is a chance we're going to get to it. So just be patient. Okay, so power load system, it's a seven foot floor plate that we've installed into the five sub beams of your vehicle. It's all been dynamically crash tested, so it's a lot safer than the other cot fastening system is. If you were to get into a crash, it would sustain a 22 G forward facing force, 12 Gs to the side, and 10 Gs in a rollover. The other cot fastener is not crash tested at all, um, so this is much, much safer. To get it out, you just press down on the red button and pull out. It jogs up, so if you have a heavy patient on here, your wheels don't drag across the bottom of your floor. You bring it all the way out, and in this position, it will hold a 700 pound patient plus the weight of the cot, plus any of your equipment. So it's actually rated at 870 pounds. When you see the light turn green, that's your indication that you can lower it down. There's two lights, but they're the same, so you only need to look at one of them. When you see that light turn green, you press and hold down the plus button because the plus makes it bigger and the minus makes it smaller. So you press and hold down the plus button until you hear the pitch change, which is right there. When you hear that pitch change, you can stop pressing the button because the loading arms are coming down automatically at that point. When it's all the way down, there's a little wireless release button here above the plus and minus. You press that and pull out. So this is the actual load system. What's in here is a motorcycle battery. This battery charges off the vehicle whenever the vehicle is turned on or plugged into the shoreline. This charges your cop battery. So now whenever you're plugged into the shoreline or driving, your cot battery is also charging, so you don't have to worry about swapping the batteries. It's only gonna charge the striker batteries though. It's, I know, I think you guys might have some of the old DeWalt's running around. This is not gonna inductively charge the DeWalt batteries, just so you know. Um, to shut your doors, you just lift up on these arms, bring this in, wherever you set it down is where it's gonna stop, and then you can shut your doors, go inside, do what you have to do. When you come back out to load, just lift up on the arms and bring it back out. And then you want to get the head and wheels going in towards those flashing amber lights. When you're secured in, the lights turn green. Press and hold down the minus button because the minus makes it smaller. You don't have to lift anything. And then you push it in. So this is like a file cabinet. I'm controlling this. You don't have to worry about it drifting off to the side anymore. You're going straight in and straight out every time, which is great. Um, another huge benefit is that it virtually eliminates patient drops because even if I fell or something happened to me, I'm not going to drop the patient. Push it all the way in and then it lowers itself down. So that's just normal operation. Do you guys have any questions about that? No? Okay, so um, as far as manual overrides go, like I said, there's two batteries. So there's the battery in the cot, and then there's also the battery in the load system. I'm going to go over what happens if the cot battery dies, what happens if the load system dies, what happens if both of them die. So first scenario would be your cot battery has died, but the load system is still working. So it's charging all the time, so this shouldn't happen, plus you have your backup battery, so it's unlikely, but let's just say power cot battery is dead, but the load system is working fine. You bring it all the way out, and you go to use these buttons, and these buttons aren't going to work if your battery's dead. So pull the manual release on the cot to bring the legs down. And then on this side over here, if you guys want to take a look, is there's a control panel. On this control panel, there's three buttons. Uh, on the far left, there's the power on off button. So that just powers the load system on and off. There's an arrow pointing up, an arrow pointing down, and then the far button on the right is what we call the dump button, which I'll get to. But in this scenario, you want it to come down. So you're gonna press and hold down the arrow down button. And this one you hold the whole time. So even after the pitch change, you keep holding it. When it's all the way down, this wireless release button doesn't work if your battery's dead. So to manually release it, you lift up on either one of these red tops. If you need to load the cot in and the battery's dead, it's, you just do the opposite. So you bring it in, you do the arrow up. I would pull the manual release and my partner's gonna lift the legs. And it's a little bit harder to do because it's letting the hydraulics out. Um, when you do this, you want to hold this manual release the whole time, even when it's lowering down. 
you want to hold it the whole time. So even if your cot battery is dead, you're still not having to lift the cot and the patient, you're just having to lift the legs. Does that make sense? Okay, so now let's say the power load system died. So something went completely wrong, the power load system's not working, you go to bring it out, right away you're gonna know because if it's dead, it's not gonna raise up like that. And you're gonna get used to it doing that every single time that you're gonna realize that if it doesn't do that, something's wrong. Bring it all the way out. Then thing, pull the manual release. And then this is when you use the dump button, which is the far button on the right. So what this does is it lets the hydraulics out of the lifting arms. So I'm gonna press this, and then I'm actually gonna reach and pull the arms down while I'm pressing the button. So you're just manually bringing those arms down. So if for any reason you can't get these to come down, you can always just press the button and pull them down. Then you do the manual release. So now if the load system is dead, and you need to load the cot into the ambulance, you're gonna lift up on these arms, bring this all the way to the front, and then you're gonna load on top of it. So this is like exactly what you're doing right now. Worst case scenario, you're doing what you were doing before. That's why we leave the safety hook here, mm -hmm. is so that you could still load the cot on top if this isn't working. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, once you bring this all the way forward, in order to get it out, there's a red button on the back here that you have to push. And then you have to lift up on the arms like this to get it to come back out. And this button is up here to get it to come back out. Yeah, it's actually up there. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All the way You guys have questions about any of that? So, kind of some more troubleshooting stuff. So, uh, as far as like hills and angles and all that kind of stuff goes. So I get a lot of questions about your vehicle and how it dumps. So let's say for some reason it didn't dump and you're on a hill, you're gonna be really high up. Uh, what happens is, so let's say you're on that extreme incline. So you're parked at the top and you're kind of hanging off like that. This, that's gonna be sort of the worst case scenario because what happens is you come to unload and you fully extended the legs on the cot, but they're not reaching the ground because you're hanging off. The best thing to do is if you could park down the angle, that's gonna help a lot, but let's say you can't do that for some reason. Um, the load system will not release the cot unless the wheels are on the ground, because we are trying to not drop the patient. Um, but you can trick it into thinking that the wheels are on the ground by lifting up on it and pressing the cross button, because if you lift up on it, it thinks the wheels are on the ground, and then it's gonna lower those arms. Um, if you're in that scenario and you're trying to load the cot, um, you've raised the cot as high as it will go, but it's not as high as your deck height because your deck height is so high. You can use this to get up on it. As long as you get those wheels up on the deck, it will lift and load it. So you just got to get it up there. Um, side to side, what happens is like this what happens is the cot is like off this way or it's off that way and you go to raise the arms up and these arms come up and then they're gonna hit the frame of the cot um, now when you do that it will stop so the load system will sense the frame of the cot and it will just stop it won't go up so if you run into that that's why it's doing that you have to you have to pull it straight so basically pull it straight so that when the arms come up, they're not going to hit the frame of the cot. The old system doesn't do that, right? The old system yeah. doesn't do that, yeah. So that was an improvement that cool. we made about two years ago. Um, because before it would hit the frame of the cot and then kick it straight. Uh, let me think of what else. Uh, oh, another thing is if you're on like an incline, um, sometimes you're pressing this wireless release button and pulling on it and it doesn't want to come out. The reason why that is, is there's a lot of pressure coming this way. If you actually push in and then press the button, it will release it, if that makes sense. Like just take some of the pressure off. It wants to know you're trying to get it out. Um, there was a question about, uh, about this getting stuck. I think in Redmond or someplace, there was like a scenario where it got stuck. So, uh, 
You want to keep the track clean. Sorry, and what I mean by clean is free of debris. So you don't want anything getting lodged into the track. If something does get lodged into the track, you can uh, manually move the track. And that's by pulling back on these two red triggers right here. So I just pull back on this and this is how I can manually release it. Those are hard to see when the cot is loaded on top. Um, they are painted red, um, which is also an update that we made before they were black. Uh, but yeah, so that's how you could manually release it if something does get lodged in there. Um, yeah, so these red straps right here, you lift up on either one of them or both of them. It makes it so that you don't have to stuff the pillows underneath here anymore. It also gets the patient's feet out of your face when you're loading and unloading. So that's called knee gash. The release is right down here. Right here, it still does the Allenberg, same release. So it's this right here. Yep, so just pull out. And when somebody's legs are on here, it can be heavy. So I would recommend putting it up before somebody gets on, potentially, or just be ready to lift their legs. Um, and then you guys know, you guys have side rails, right? The ICS But you get them? Okay, so yeah, so these. They fold down and in the lowest position you get 38% more surface area on the cot. So there's seven different locking heights so that you can bring the weight of the patient back towards the center of the cot. Um, and these side rails come with this mattress which is a little bit thicker and a little bit wider than our normal mattress. It's designed so that when you do the transfer in the hospital, it will eliminate the gap between the cot and the bed. How much weight will those sustain? So if that doesn't get dropped all the way flat, it's about it's about a hundred pounds. Okay, so you don't a lot to of put people, the weight of a patient on. Them. No, you don't, and you don't want somebody like really lifting themselves, and you don't want to lift with this. Um, but what some people do is they'll put this on like the bed or something. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, you can do that for okay. sure. <laughs> they don't go all the way flat. A lot of people ask me why, and it's because. This meets all of like the tip stability criteria. We had to meet that testing. And if it were to go flat and somebody sat on it or something, you could tip the car. So the battery, you say, yeah. charges itself yep. on the system all the time. Yep. Have you had very many people that had to swap them out or do they generally? We actually recommend swapping them so that you're using both of the batteries. Okay. Uh, because yeah, if you don't, then you could be using the same battery for like two years. You'll get and the memory. other one's just sitting there. So best practice would be to swap it out every like week or two to okay. make sure you're using both of them. But yeah, there's a good chance that it won't, especially if you have new batteries, that they won't ever go flashing yellow because they're charging all the time. Um, one thing I did forget was that um, so, um, you guys are used to using the hook. So just be aware that you don't want to put this hook on top because then it's not going to work. I mean, it's pretty obvious that some people will do that because you are so used to using the hook that it's just like muscle memory, like you're not thinking in the middle of the night. Um, so you don't want to do that. The other thing you don't want to do is, um, of course, people get So I just raise these up a little bit, not all the way. This will still come off because the wheels are on the ground, but then People will be very confused about why these are up like this and why they can't come down. But to get them to come down, just push them down. But that's um, so if they're using these buttons on the side and they don't bring them all the way down. Small things. <laughs> 